In this video, we're going to look at histology slides of muscle and nervous tissue and go over how to identify different types. Now, when we're talking about muscle tissue, we're really talking about tissue that allows movement of some kind. And there's three major types of muscle tissue. There's skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. The skeletal muscle is the muscle that is attached to your bones that allows the voluntary movement of our body versus cardiac muscle which is involuntary and it's the muscles that are found in your heart that allows your heart to pump versus smooth muscle which is also involuntary and this is the muscle that you're going to find in a lot of different organs to allow the organ to do their job and then when we look at nervous tissue there's really only two major types of cells that you find in nervous tissue there are neurons which are very large and what are going to actually send action potentials for communication and then there's neuroglial cells which are going to support those neurons all right, so the first slide we're going to look at is skeletal muscle. And as we zoom into the skeletal muscle, you might notice how long the cells of skeletal muscle are. So they're very long tubes. And if you look closely enough, you're going to see these bands going all the way down the cell. This is what we refer to as striation. And these are chains of proteins that allow for contraction. Now these muscle fibers are loaded with these proteins for contraction. So they push a lot of the other components of the cell to the periphery of the cell including the nuclei. So each one of these muscle cells has multiple nuclei. So we say they are multinucleated. And all these nuclei are pushed to the periphery of the cell to make room for these proteins. So because skeletal muscle has long cells that are multinucleated with these striations, it makes them pretty easy to identify. The next slide we're going to look at is of cardiac muscle. And the cells of cardiac muscle have a couple of key characteristics that are different than skeletal muscle. So one thing you'll notice as I outline the cell here is that cardiac muscle cells are not long tubes like skeletal muscle cells are. They actually have this branching pattern that allows one muscle cell to attach to many other cells. In addition to that, they also have only one nucleus, so they are uninucleated. And that nucleus is found right in the middle of the cell, not pushed up against the plasma membrane like as in skeletal muscle. But one thing cardiac muscle does have in common with skeletal muscle is that it's striated again. So we have these chains or these bands of proteins going down the cell that allow contraction. And one last thing that you can notice here is where one finger of the branching pattern of the cell meets another finger of another cell. It creates this very defined line. And we have a name for this line. We call it an intercalated disc. So this is how the cells are going to attach to each other. So with cardiac muscle, we have these striated cells that only have one nucleus that is in the center with this branching pattern that allows one cell to attach to multiple other cells. Okay, so the next slide we're going to look at is smooth muscle. So to see smooth muscle, we're going to go back to the jejunum slide. And if you remember, jejunum was our example for simple columnar epithelial tissue. So to find the smooth muscle, we need to go to one of these outer layers out here. And all this smooth muscle is going to help the organ work. So specifically for the jejunum, it's going to help move food down the small intestine. As we zoom in, you can start to see where the name came from for smooth muscle. And it's because there's no striation like we see in the skeletal or the cardiac muscle, making the cells look smoother. Also, the shape of the cell is very different than the other types of muscle tissue as well. So when we outline it, you can see it's more of a spindle shape, where it has two tapered ends. And like the skeletal muscle, smooth muscle only has one nucleus that's going to be found right in the center of the cell. So again, smooth muscle is going to be found in different organs. This is going to be an involuntary muscle. And it's going to help the organ achieve its function by allowing the organ to move in some way. Okay, so the next slide we're going to look at is the nervous tissue. And there's really only two major types of cells in nervous tissue. There's neurons and neuroglial cells. So zooming into the highest magnification, we could see one of these very large neurons. And this is what's going to pass action potential for communication inside your body. And around the neuron, you'll see all these little tiny cells. And these are neuroglial cells. Now the neuroglial cells' job is to help support the neuron. And they support the neuron in many ways. They could physically support the neuron, they could help make ATP for the neuron, they could provide nutrients to the neuron, and they can help the neuron make myelinated sheaths. So this large cell in the middle is the neuron, it's going to pass information, while the neuroglial cells are the smaller cells around it that are going to help support this neuron. And the last slide we're going to look at is where nervous tissue and muscle meet, and we call this the neuromuscular junction. 
So as we focus here, you can see the axon of the neuron that is going to innervate this muscle tissue. And axons can branch, so you're seeing an axon branching off into many different ends. So focusing on one of these ends, we have a name for them. We call them axon terminals. So the axon terminal is what's going to touch the muscle tissue. And if you look closely enough into this axon terminal, you're going to see all these little vesicles in there. And these vesicles are full of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. So what's going to happen is as action potential comes down this axon of the neuron and reaches the axon terminal, it's going to force these vesicles to release their neurotransmitter. And when that neurotransmitter hits the muscle tissue, that acetylcholine is going to cause the muscle to contract. Okay, so that's it for muscle tissue and nervous tissue. So we've looked at the three different types of muscle tissue, the skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. And then we saw the two different types of cells in nervous tissue, the neurons and the neuroglial cells. And then finally, we looked at those two tissues coming together in a neuromuscular junction.